Okay, now for question number four from M1 2019, January, International A-Level. Here we have a question about moments, I guess. We have a boy who sees a box on the end Q of a plank PQ, which overhangs a swimming pool. The plank has a mass of 30 kilograms, is five meters long, and um, rests in a horizontal position on two bricks. The bricks are modeled as a smooth supports, one acting on the rod at P and the, the other, um, sorry, at P, and one acting on the rod at R, where PR is three meters. Okay, all of that is shown here. Um, the support at R is on the edge of the swimming pool, as shown in figure two. The boy has a mass 40 kilograms, and the box has a mass 2.5 kilograms. The plank is modeled, modeled as a uniform rod, and the boy and the box are modeled as particles. The boy steps onto the plank at P and begins to walk slowly along the plank towards the box. Okay, so find the distance he can walk along the plank before the plank starts to tilt. Okay, so let's put this information on the diagram. I'll put the diagram down here so we can see the information we're doing the working now so a boy sees a box on the end q of a plank pq which overhangs swimming pool the plank has a mass of 30 kilograms okay so the ma the plank has a mass of 30 kilograms and we also told that the plank is a uniform plank okay it's a uniform model as a uniform rod therefore we take its weight to act through its geometric center. So it's five meters long. So 2.5 meters in from the end will be where the weight of the plank acts. So I'm going to draw here roughly halfway. That's going to be the weight. So the plank is 30 kilograms. So this is going to be 30 G Newtons. That's the weight of the plank acting. 2.5 meters in from the end of the plank. Okay, so you can say that that 30 G is acting. That's 2.5 meters from there to there. Okay, oops, from the end of the plank. So that's 2.5 meters. Okay, um, what else do we have? All right, the bricks are models. Okay, so you got you're gonna have the reactions reactions at the supports okay the reactions at the supports at p and at q and at r okay so that's the reaction force at p and the reaction force at r okay um the support on r is okay the boy has a mass 40 kilograms okay so the boy has a mass 40 kilograms so the boy is walking from p along here and when he goes past R is when it's going to be at risk of tilting. So the boy works a certain distance away from P. Somewhere over here, the boy will be when this thing might start to tilt. So let's say the boy is over here. And this is his weight acting at one point because he's modeled as a particle. So the boy has a mass of 40 kilograms. So this is going to be 40 G. That's that, and the distance away from the starting point for him is going to be x, unknown. We don't know what it is, so I'll just put that in here. That's what we have to find in part A. So I'm going to call that distance x. Okay, so that's 40g, and that's x away from the point p. Okay, <clears throat> that, now what else do we have? It says... Um, the box has a mass of 2.5 kilograms, so we take the mass of the box as if it's right on the end of the plank, it's acting as a particle, and it has a mass of 2.5, that's 2.5 G here, 2.5 G Newtons. Okay, so I think for part A, that's everything we, we need. Okay, we have everything we need here. Mm, yeah, okay, so now... The boy steps onto the plank at P and begins to walk slowly to, along the plank. Find the distance he can walk along the plank from P before the plank starts to tilt. 
Now, at the time when the plank starts to tilt, okay, when the plank starts to tilt, okay, so you've got your support here and your support here. When it starts to tilt, just before it starts tilting, the reaction on this support will become zero. The reaction on this support will be zero at the point where it starts to tilt because it's about to lift up from there. Okay, the plank's about to lift up from this support. So for part A, this has to be zero. We want to find how far he can walk such that this becomes zero. Just when it first becomes zero. Okay, so what, that's what we need to do. So if RP is zero, oops, what happened here? If RP is equal to zero, okay, that means the reaction at R will be the total weight of everything else because if you're resolving upwards okay r plus r r is equal to 30g plus 40g plus 2.5 so this is equal to 30g plus 40g plus 2.5g that gives you 72.5g 72.5g that's the mass of the plank and the mass or the weight of the plank and the weight not g sorry 72.5 g newtons okay so basically um yeah it's the weight of the plank plus the weight of the boy plus the weight of the box all of those weights is going to equal to the reaction force at r because the reaction force at p is zero so that all all of the, that you know that's going to be on r now okay all right so now <clears throat> Um, so we know that this is 72.5 G Newtons. Okay, these are all Newtons, 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 Newtons. Okay, so what we can do now is we can take moments about any point because we have everything we need except for this X. So let's take moments about P. Why am I taking moments about P? Because we want to find the distance from P so that will make my distance X. I could take moments about other places, for example, about R if I wanted to or any other place to make the forces less, but I don't think it makes such a big deal for us to take it about P. We don't have to flap around with the lengths, and the length will be perfectly, all of them are measured from, from P, so I think it makes it easier, to be honest. So let's take moments about P. If we take moments about P, okay, the anti-clockwise moments and the clockwise moments are the same because it hasn't started tilting yet, so it's in equilibrium. So the anti-clockwise moments and the, and the clockwise moments are going to be the same. So let's look at the clockwise moments. The clockwise moments are going to be given by 30g times 2.5 times 2.5. That's for this one. Plus, and you're going to have um, 40g times x. 40g times x. That's for this one. And then you got plus 2.5g times the length of the whole plank which is five and you know that's equal to the clockwise moments uh, sorry the anti-clockwise moments these are the clockwise ones anti-clockwise moments are going to be given by the reaction at r which is 72.5 g times the distance of this this is going to be three meters times three okay so here we have everything um, included here the only thing we don't need know is this x Okay, so we can just put this stuff into our calculator. So we've got 30, so we've got 30 uh, times 2.5, which gives us 75G. Okay, you've got 75G, 75G, and you've got plus 40GX plus, uh, that's 2.5 times 5, isn't it? And you've got 2.5 times 5, which gives you 12.5 G, equals and 3 times 72.5, which gives you 217.5 G. What you'll notice here is you've got G in every single term. So we can just divide the whole thing by G to get rid of it. And then we don't have to worry about the G. So here we got 75 plus 12.5. Okay. So you've got 75 plus 12.5. So 75 plus 12.5 gives you 87.5. So you've got 40X plus 
87.5 equals 217.5. So 40x is equal to 217.5 minus 87.5. 217.5 minus, that's 130. So therefore, x is equal to 130 by 40. 130 divided by 40. The zeros cancel out. So left with x equals 13 over 4. x equals 13 divided by 4, which gives you 3.25 meters. So x is 3.25 meters. That's the answer for part A. And part B, state how, how, how you have used in your working the fact that the box is modeled as a particle. Okay, so we, we can say that its weight, we used it by saying that it's basically by, by assuming its weight acts through a single point. A single point. And we took that point as uh, 5 meters from P. 5 meters from P. That's what we took it in this question. Okay, so that's how you can answer part B of this question. And that's the answer for part A, 3.25 meters. Now let's go on to part C. Okay, it says a rock of mass M kilograms is placed on the plank at P. The boy is then able to walk slowly along the plank to the box at the end Q without the plank tilting. The rock is modeled as a particle. Find the smallest possible value of M. Okay, so now we have the same situation. You have the weight of the box acting there, which is 2.5 meters away from the end. And the weight of the plank was... Just make sure 30 kilograms. Yep, 30 kilograms. So that's 30 G Newtons. Okay, then you've got the box and the boy both at the end of the plank. Okay, so you've got the box and the boy both at the end of the plank. So you've got their combined weight. They're both, you can say, at the same point. So the combined weight of the box and the plank and the box and the boy, sorry. The boy is 40 kilograms and the box is 2.5. That's 42.5 kilograms here. That's 40, oops, 42.5 kilograms. Um, so 42.5 G Newtons. Okay, that's the, the weight for the boy and the box there. Um, and you have the reaction force at R and the reaction force at P. So you have RP and RR. Okay, and the rock, you've got now a rock which is placed at P. So you've got here the mass of the rock, which is M. So that's M kilograms, so that's going to be Mg. It's going to have Mg Newtons here. That's the mass of the rock. So you've got to find the smallest possible value of M. So it says that, again, the plank is not going to tilt. So you've got to find, for m to be the smallest possible value, you've got to find um, the situation where it's just about to tilt again, just about to tilt, because if it's any bigger than that, okay, uh, then it won't just about, it won't be just about to tilt, but if it's any smaller than that, it will tilt. So you've got to find the mass of the rock such that this is just on the point of tilting when the boy is over here, okay, so that if the mass of the rock was any less than that, Okay, if the mass of the rock was any less than that, then it would tilt. Okay, then it would tilt. So we're going to find the biggest possible value, sorry, this, um, the smallest possible value the, of this, such that if it's smaller than that, it would tilt. Just the, the, the limit so that it won't tilt. Okay, so um, again, we're going to have a very similar type of situation, but this time we cannot take moments about P because that will eliminate the M. So we've got to find another place to take moments about. Okay, so let's take moments about, for example, um, R. Okay, if we take moments about R, um, then we don't have to worry about, because R, the reaction at R is going to include 
this m. The reaction of R is going to be mg plus 30g plus 42.5g. So you're going to have an unknown m here as well. So if we take moments about R, I think that would be the most sensible thing to do. Okay, so if we take moments about R, then this distance here is going to be 2 meters. And this, as we can see, is 3 meters. What's this distance here going to be? Well, that's 2.5 meters. So that's 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so we have everything we need. So we're going to take moments about R. Okay, so let's look at the clockwise moments first. The clockwise moments about R are given by this. Okay, which is 42.5 times 2. That's clockwise. And also the reaction at P, which is, that's going to be 0 because it's just about to tilt, so you don't have to worry about that one. Um, that's the clockwise moment. And this, this, these two will be the anticlockwise. So that's going to equal 30G times 0 0.5 plus, and you're going to have this distance here, which is 3 meters times mg. So you've got 3 times mg. Okay, so again, that's 42.5G, sorry. Okay, 42.5G newtons. Okay, so again, the Gs will cancel out. So we can get rid of the Gs. So G's in every term, and we can now work out what M is, it's only unknown. So we've got 2 times 42.5, so you've got 42.5 times 2, which gives you 85. So you've got 85 is equal to 0.5 times 30, which is 15, plus 3M. So you have 85 minus 15, which is going to give you 70, equals 3M. 85 minus 15 so then you have m equals 70 over 3 kilograms okay so you have 85 minus 15 divided by 3 so you can leave your answer like that if you want but you can write it as 23.3 if you want or you can write it as 23 okay or you can leave it as that all of those are acceptable Okay, 2SF, 3SF, or the exact value. Unless the question says find the exact value. Well, it doesn't, it's as small as possible value. Okay, so that's the answer for part C. Okay, so what do we use here? We use the fact that this is going to be, for M to be its smallest possible value, it's going to be on the point of tilting by the time he reaches there. But it's not going to start tilting. So we've got to find the value of M such that reaction here is zero, and the reaction here is all of these things. But we didn't actually have to find the reaction here because we took moments about here. That was that, that was a sensible thing to do because then you eliminate this expression here which will involve another M in there as well. It makes life a lot easier for you. Okay, so there's the answer to part C and the end of this question.